Sumeru Nayak, who is a PhD student in Rhode Island University, right, supervised by uh, Sumantha da Dr. Sumantha Das. Right. Let's, um, let's welcome him to give a presentation on microstructure guided numerical simulation to evaluate the influence of PCMs on the thermal response of concrete pavements. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk uh, about a microstructure guided uh, numerical simulation approach uh, so that we can have uh, the influence of the PCMs on the thermal response for concrete structures like macro structures, maybe pavements and bridges. So the brief outline is uh, first the motivation and objectives of the study. Then uh, we'll have the multi-scale numerical homogenization for effective property prediction because we know the properties of the individual phases but not the uh, composite material. And then we will simulate the thermal response for the macro scale uh, structures. Then we will go back to the uh, micro scale and find out the influence of the PCMs. Then uh, we'll compare with the experimental results. So as per the motivations and objectives, freeze thaw induced damage, especially in the northeast of US uh, and in the area I stay like in Rhode Island, uh, it's, I mean, most of, most of the places, it's a major cause of de uh, degradation in concrete, stru concrete structures. And uh, sometimes the winter, uh, winter is accompanied by rainfall, which makes things worse. And uh, this study aims to investigate the influence of uh, PCMs for the concrete pavements and we will use a multi-scale technique. So we will go through different scales like micro scale, meso scale and the macro scale uh, bridges and pavements. And uh, it will also incorporate some multi-physical numerical frameworks to incorporate chloride ingress. And hopefully this will empower the researchers and designers with tools to be used for innovative applications. So this is the basic framework where uh, this one, the first one shows the micro scale and meso scales where we combine the properties of the individual phases. So if this is the matrix, the blue one is the matrix and the inclusion, so we combine those properties, the thermal properties to obtain the properties of the composite. So the composite here essentially means the PCM and the normal concrete like we have uh, sand and coarse aggregates. So first we obtain those properties uh, for the material. Then that property goes into the macro scale uh, concrete uh, pavement section. And we obtain the uh, response of that pavement to ambient temperatures or daily weather conditions. Once we have that, uh, we go back to the influence of the PCMs in the micro scale. So the connection here is like when we have the uh, thermal response of the pavements, we can again go back to its mechanical damage that occurred in the uh, micro scale due to the thermal stresses generated here. Now once we have the uh, microstructure damages, we put it in a multi-physics framework to find the chloride diffusion in such microstructures, in the damaged microstructures. So I'm going to talk about each of these uh, modules. So the first module here is the numerical homogenization module. So it's a multi-scale homogenization, basically implying the, uh, this procedure to be repeated at every scale, as you can see here. So the first scale is uh, cement paste plus air voids. The next scale is uh, cement paste plus air voids plus PCMs. So basically the cement paste and uh, air voids becomes a matrix in the second scale. And we again homogenize it with the inclusions, which is the PCM. So this step goes on and finally we arrive at the PCM incorporated concrete. And at every step, these are the, uh, these are the, these are the procedure that we follow for the homogenization procedure. So we generate a random microstructure with uh, all these inclusions generated randomly and we apply the intrinsic properties to each phase. Then we mesh it, we apply periodic boundary conditions and we subject it to excitations which are either thermomechanical in nature or thermal in nature which are basically heat gradients and from there we obtain the 
these properties, effect, the effective properties, which are the coefficient of thermal expansion, thermal conductivity, and heat capacity. Why we need these properties is because all these properties will be essential for the macro scale analysis of the pavements. So, now I'm going to talk about the macro scale analysis, the thermal analysis of the pavement of the real pavement section. So, here I have shown a pavement section which is basically a concrete on a semi infinite subgrid. And here we incorporate all the modes of heat conduction, uh, of more heat transfer, so conduction, convection, radiation, and uh, conduction between the top concrete layer and the bottom subgrid layer. So it's a transient thermal analysis performed with abacus, and uh, here uh, we incorporate the effect of uh, latent heat of PCMs. And the daily weather condition, daily weather data is uh, taken from the you know, AA website and it's imposed a thermal boundary condition here. So here essentially T0, T is the uh, daily weather temperature. And we find, we obtain the freezing and thawing of the porous media from the temperature profile. So this is a typical temperature profile for a month. Uh, it's January 2018 uh, in Providence. So here we, ha we have three kinds of data. One is the ambient, the second is the uh, normal concrete, and the third is the PCM concrete. So the basic takeaway from this graph is that we have the ambient temperature as an input, the solar radiation as another input, and we apply it to the FE analysis and we obtain the heating and cooling cycles. So going back, I can show you here uh, that PCM incorporated concrete will have lesser peaks the the so basically PCM due to its uh, latent heat release uh, at uh, its TG the uh, temperature of phase change transition phase change temperature it will release the heat and it will basically reduce the amplitude of this variation of the temperature variations throughout the uh, time so now I'm done with two, these two steps and I have the temperature, amplitude, surface temperature profiles of these pavements. So once I have the surface temperature profiles, I can calculate the freeze thaw frequency. And depending on the freeze thaw frequency, I can go back to the micro scales to check the mechanical damage in those scales. So this is the multi scale progressive damage due to the freeze thaw cycles. So the basic idea here is. Uh, the pores in the mm, motor microstructure. So, okay, so let me clarify. This is motor. These two are motor. The ends are motor. And inside these are concrete. So, the basic difference between motor and concrete is motor will have the sand particles, which are 600 microns, and control, uh, sorry, uh, concrete will have the coarse aggregate, which are greater than 4.5 millimeters. And uh, so, the basic idea here is we implement uh, artificial volume expansion on the pores, assuming that the pores will freeze and increase in volume. Once we do that, we uh, get a continuum damage in the matrix and we quantify that continuum damage to uh, show the effectiveness of PCM's thermal performance in terms of its mechanical effectiveness. So basically the PCM incorporation uh, releases the latent heat so it minimizes the free freezing frequency so we can have enhanced durability. So as you can see here, this is with increasing time, 1st, 21st and 31st January. So the corresponding states for PCM are lesser damaged than that of the control samples. So with that I will move to um, the multi-physics framework where I will apply these damaged microstructures to a chloride gradient and see the chloride ingress in these kinds of microstructures. So the framework that is followed here is uh, like I start from the beginning that I generate a 3D unit cell, I apply a damage or rather I get a mechanical damage due to freezing of the pores and then I do a diffusion model of that uh, damaged microstructure. So basically it has continuum damage in the um, matrix and wherever it is damaged, the diffusivity of it increases 
by many folds in the diffusion model. So that's how we get the provided ingress into the microstructure. So this is again a par phase model. So the damaged microstructure has enhanced provided diffusivity per phase. And uh, uh, if you see the differences here, this is for the motor scale. So this is the initial stage and this is the final stage. So the chloride ingress in the concrete, uh, I mean control motor is significantly higher than that in the PCM motor. So basically again, uh, it's a, since it's a multi-phase framework and uh, multi-physics framework, so we started with PCM incorporation. We showed its thermal effectiveness and its thermal effectiveness results in enhanced damage resistance due to freeze thaw cycles and that one uh, uh, reduces the chloride diffusivity. So it's a synergistic dur uh, durability enhancement. Now in order to quantify these two modules, so in the mechanical module, uh, we have the time versus the ratio of degraded Young's modulus to the initial Young's modulus, which can be a measure of the induced mechanical damage due to the freeze thaw cycles. So uh, here again, uh, control concrete degrades more than the PCM incorporated concrete. And this is a measure of the induced diffusion, which is the ratio of the enhanced diffusivity, the composite diffusivity to the initial diffusivity, where again, uh, control concrete shows a higher diffusivity, uh, implying lesser durability. And these are the validations with other experimental researches and uh, these match closely with our simulations. So that's all I have and I'm really grateful to my professor, Dr. Das, for his guidance and support. Thank you.